Hey, I'm Ryan Callahan. I'm gonna show you how to properly pop the shanks on a white-tailed deer my way. I think shank meat is something that should always come out of the woods. It's all the sinew, all the blue skin that makes it so hard to chew through that makes it so good. So uh, I prefer bone-in shanks, particularly on smaller animals like whitetails. Your bigger animals like elk and uh, moose, I'll take those shanks and cut them into discs for that kind of traditional osso-buco look. But today I'm gonna show you how to separate your shank from your shoulder and your shank from your ham using just your knife. Why you wanna eat this is because it's so tough and full of sinew and all your connective muscles over here are, can be tough and full of sinews at, at this point also. So don't be afraid to, you're not gonna ruin any meat by coming in here on top of the shank, or this would be like the uh, elbow bone on the foreleg. And I just gently work and free up following your sinew lines, just as we always do. And now I'm coming right down to the bone. And I'm gonna work this back. And this is just tip of the knife work. And that's what this tip is for. This Benchmade Meat Crafter um, almost looks oversized when you look at it on something as small as a small white tail. But the point of this is you can do a lot of work with this much blade, then you have this much blade to do the cutting. This is exploratory and just popping off these seams and uh, finding our joint in the seam, or our seam in the joint rather. Um, and then we still have a lot of fresh blade to work with. So again, I'm coming in and now that I have these muscles freed up around the shank, I can really see where I need to cut. And you can see this pocket starting to open up and there's the base of our knuckle on this joint, just like you'd see on a chicken wing. And now that there's this little air pocket here and there are joints fully exposed, we're just exploring in here and being gentle. There's no, no need to use your knife as a saw. Gentle on your knife point, not gentle on the joint. And then you're using this tension and just very easily touching in here. And that tension's helping this joint pull away. You can flip it over if you want. And again, putting tension on here using the weight, I can just gently I'm twisting with my left hand and I'm gently just touching the sharp point, the tip of the knife against that tough ligament and sinew. And there's your foreleg white tail shank. Okay, so now here is your rear. It looks a little more complicated because of this big ligament, the big hamstring back here. But you can see, if you pull on this, you'll see the defined shank. And of course, here's your joint. So again, I kind of like to start with the meat end of things. And I'm just gonna free this up. And I'm using tension and the very tip of the knife here. I'm following that sinew line. Flip this over, same deal. You can see, if you put your finger in here, this is just sinew, you're not gonna mess anything up. Make sure my finger's out of the way. All right, so now you can see how this is, this very traditional looking shank uh, coming into view. Now uh, this uh, kind of sheath has been peeled back. 
I'm gonna flip it around just so you can see it better. Here is the joint, but for me, this chunk of meat right here is shank meat. So what I try to do is I actually, I'm gonna cut this and keep this all as one and cook it all together because they're very, very similar. I'm not sure what the heck else you're gonna do with this little triangle of meat. So I'm gonna cut down here, this chunk of ligament, your hamstring, I'll throw in the stock pot as well. So we'll come back for this chunk, but here is this nice shank and same deal. I'm just kind of gently coming in and I'm gonna start working this open, a little bit of tension and I can see here's this nice joint pocket starting to come into view and I'm not killing my knife. I'm just gently working the tip in here and again, the flex on this Benchmade Meat Crafter provides feel. You don't wanna be using this thing as a saw or any knife for that matter. So again, I can see here's my pocket and I'm just gently using the sharpness of this blade. Now again, just like before on the front shoulder, I'm gonna start using some tension and just gently freeing the shank. So that's pretty darn loose. So there's your shank freed up. But again, you have this tail of all these converging tips and muscles that come down to uh, the hamstring. And that, I mean, that's, that's basically shank meat to me. So I'm just gonna come in free that up, not be too crazy about it. There's a, a sinew line right here as well, but I'm coming right across the top and you can see, like if you were to bisect your shank right there, it's gonna look just like this anyway. So I kind of combine this with the rear shank. Um, if it's fresh and, and it hasn't gotten a little dry like this, uh, I'll often leave this as one big connected chunk. And then you have your big rear bone in ham that is just a ham. Put this off to the side. Here's your traditional shanks, front, rear, if you want, you can take the top of the hamstring and combine it in here with your rear shank. This is stuff that you will absolutely impress people with. Uh, it's slow cooking, it makes the house smell great. So keep your shanks. To get your meat crafter by Benchmade, go to the meateater.com, benchmade.com, or your local Shield store.